Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the preparatory ground instruction for exercise 21, precautionary landings. In uh, this lesson, we're going to learn how to do precautionary landings and some decision-making aspects to uh, precautionary landings. So a precautionary landing is a landing with engine power that's unplanned or you're unsure of uh, the surface. So this is uh, actually a really important lesson to, to know uh, you will find yourself doing precautionary landings quite often if you're, let's say, flying floats or skis where you're never sure of the surface that you're landing on. Uh, or even sometimes you're landing on a runway that nobody else has landed on in a while and you just need to make sure that, uh, that it's suitable for landing. So there's a number of situations where you might find yourself wanting to do a precautionary landing. Let's say an unfamiliar aerodrome. Uh, you're, if you're flying skis or a seaplane, you're always doing precautionary landings. You're always taking a look at the water or the snow before you're landing, make sure there's no obstacles there. You might also do a precautionary landing uh, because you have partial engine power or some other sort of emergency. Uh, you have to get on the ground relatively quick. Um, it's not a forced approach, uh, you st but there is some mechanical issue that you have to get on the ground with quick, or you have some bad weather. And so with all these situations, it's important that you just use your decision-making to adjust the procedure to fit the situation. So for example, uh, a partial engine power, like a engine loss, you might just kind of cut out as much as you can and get on the ground as quick as possible. Whereas if it's not that important, uh, you can just do the whole procedure, take your time. So let's discuss this procedure. First off, you're going to select a field. I use the acronym COWS, other people use other acronyms, but CAL stands for Civilization, Obstacles, Wind, Length, and Surface. So we're looking down. Oh, that looks like a good field. Well, are there people nearby that can help us if we need that? Uh, are there obstacles? What's the wind like? Is the runway or that landing surface long enough? And what's the surface like? Is it rough? The next thing you do is a high-level inspection. This is largely optional, but you're just going to overfly the field at 1,000 feet just to make a preliminary determination. Sometimes you're just going to do this, let's say, on a downwind, or you're just kind of approaching the field. You don't really even need to fly it at a, a given direction. But it will tell you right away what the wind is like, and you'll be able to see if there's civilization, if that's what you're looking for. Now, here's the next thing. You're going to do a low-level inspection. And the way I tell people to do precautionary landings is just think of doing two circuits. So you're going to, just like if you're coming in for landing, you're going to redu uh, reduce your power, put your flaps down, let's say 10 degrees. But instead of coming in to land, you're just going to overfly the field in the direction that you want to land at about 500 feet or whatever altitude is necessary to inspect. It might be 100 feet, whatever you need. Okay. And at that point, you're looking for obstacles and trying to guess the surface. Now, here's the important thing. During the low-level inspection, it's absolutely imperative that you remain in level flight. You're going, you have to be trimmed out because you're looking outside. You're, not, you're looking down and left to see what the surface is like. You're not looking at the horizon. So you have to be uh, trimmed out. And the mistake that most pilots make during the precautionary approach is they're not trimmed out and they end up continuously descending while inspecting the field. So that's not a good thing. You might descend into some trees or something like that. After that, uh, you do a low-level inspection. You're just going to do a go-around. You're just going to climb out again, climb to circuit height. You're going to advise a ATC if you want, brief your passengers if you need to, and then think about after landing what you're going to do. And then you're just coming in and just doing a normal circuit. So really, it's quite simple, and people make it harder than it needs to be. It's just two circuits, and one of them is you don't land. So the important thing is just be level on that low-level inspection. Give yourself plenty of room. Because remember, after your low-level inspection, your downwheel will tend to be a lot tighter because you didn't have to climb out all the way on crosswind. You may have gotten some ideas and been like, oh, cool, a twin otter on a beach. I think I want to land on a beach because beaches have girls and the girls don't have much clothes on. And I think if I land on the beach, I might be able to pick up some of these girls. So in case you're just thinking that's a good idea, this guy, yeah, he knows what he's doing. He landed on a beach. This guy didn't work out so much. Uh, somebody else didn't work out well. Uh, nope. And oh, look, the police showed up too. That's embarrassing. Uh, it didn't work out for this guy either. And didn't work out for that guy either. 
Nope. One last fail. So I, I'm just going to warn you, you can actually land on a beach. Uh, it, it can be done, but it, it's a lot trickier than it looks. And here's the reason why. Uh, if you land where it's too sandy, you can imagine, I mean, if you if you stand on sand with your weight, you kind of sink in the sand. An airplane, uh, if you land right on this, the soft sand away from the ocean, you'll, you'll tend to sink in with the nose gear and, and, and collapse the nose gear, which is what happened to all these people. And then if you land too close to the water, you end up in the water. So you can land on the beach, but it has to be right in that very narrow area where it's wet. Um, or just kind of barely wet when the tide went out. Uh, so I I don't recommend you landing on a beach whatsoever uh, for for these reasons, because, well, I think a good chunk of people end up flipping their airplanes over and embarrassing themselves. We have to do a precautionary approach. First, select a field using the COWLS acronym, Civilization, Obstacle, Wind, Length, and Surface. Next, we do a high-level inspection. The purpose of this is just to figure out if it's worth going for a low-level inspection. You can either do this parallel to the field or crossing overhead the field. After the high-level inspection, do a complete circuit and set yourself up for the low-level inspection. The purpose of the low-level inspection is to assess your landing site and determine whether the wind, surface, and length are acceptable for landing. To do the low-level inspection, start early. Level off at your inspection altitude, typically less than 500 feet. Extend a bit of flaps and add enough power to maintain a safe airspeed, typically 60 to 70 knots, well outside the speed range. Make sure you're all trimmed out and inspect the field. When you get to the end of the field, you do a normal go around and join the circuit for a landing. Once you have decided to land, you're going to make a call to flight service to amend your flight plan, brief your passengers, and land as you normally would. So for your flight test, uh, if you're given a uh, precautionary approach, select a suitable aerodrome or airstrip or suitable area. Uh, a lot of times examiners will have you fly in the vicinity of another aerodrome, like a grass strip, and see, are you going to land on a road? Uh, or some farmer's field, or are you just going to land in the airport that, or the aerodrome uh, that you're over? So just kind of keep an eye on that. Make proper circuit procedures, proper radio calls, uh, do a proper inspection, and then uh, a safety briefing. And, uh, and then for your low-level inspection, just make sure it's, it's stabilized and, uh, and you're not kind of descending or slowing down. So that concludes this lesson on precautionary landings. Uh, thanks for joining me. And we'll see you in the next lesson.